The track is open. First day since the pandemic started, they just opened it up. So perfect timing because I've been doing a lot of climbing, a lot of hills, a lot of vertical, and I need to keep my leg speed. So I'm gonna hit the track today, just kind of easing into it. I'm probably gonna do just a, a bunch of strong 400s, just again, get the legs back to turning over a little quicker and getting back into the, the track groove and easing into it. So um, that's what I'm doing today. And I'm gonna get a warm up in and then we're gonna talk about runner's knee and knee pain in general. So um, looking forward to that, let's do it. I'm gonna, like I said, get warmed up and it's, it's already 65 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's going to heat up for us here in Jackson Hole. Summer, it's going to feel like summer this weekend, so we're expecting 80 degrees tomorrow. So um, I'm anxious to get the track workout in and then hit the, hit the trails. A um, little perspective, this is uh, kind of Snow King Range, the, the town downhill in town. Um, just on the other side here is the Snow King Resort and a big trail system that I haven't hit yet. Um, I've been doing a lot of stuff close to home, which home is just a little bit further south this way. Um, so I'm about two miles from home and about two miles from town. So um, good location for the track. And again, it's going to be beautiful weather. So come along, time to warm up, and then we're hitting runner's knee. So... My warm up, I'm gonna do about a mile, just nice and easy around the track, really, really easy, just kind of getting the blood going. And then I'm gonna do some barefoot drills on the turf. And then get into some 100s building speed. And then I'll get into my main set of 400s. So as I mentioned, I've been doing a lot of hills now that the trails are open. And one common mistake I see trail runners make is they, they don't keep their leg speed. You know, doing a lot of hills, doing a lot of trails is really good for strength, really good for specific training, obviously for trail racing. But oftentimes we kind of forget about the fast speed work that helps us maintain our turnover that's going to help us improve our climbing so there's a lot of benefits to doing speed work even though you might be kind of a, a traditional trail runner ultra runner don't lose that leg speed don't lose that cadence okay hills make you strong but they also make you slow so i mentioned in yesterday's workout how Things are really starting to heat up this week. Almost 10 degrees warmer than what I'm used to. So it was crucial about what I was doing yesterday from a hydration standpoint for today. So I hydrated yesterday based on what I knew the temperatures were gonna be today. So what I did yesterday prepared me for today. What I do for today will put, prepare me for tomorrow and the weekend. So you always gotta think ahead with your, your hydration that way. It's what you're doing now for tomorrow, okay? It's already really warm. Wow, it's warm really warm the turf might be too warm for barefoot barefoot drills I forgot my uh, my like moccasins that I like to use when the turf gets really warm from the Sun uh, so we'll see I'm gonna I just finished my mile warm-up nice and easy and I'm gonna transition to doing my drills but before I get too much into my workout I want to get into what we're gonna talk about today um, first foremost um, shoes so I've got this old pair of Innovate. I think the official title is the, the Rode X Lite 155. And these are, these are super old shoes, maybe 10 years old. Um, 
that I use for real minimal shoe on recovery runs and warm ups for at the track. Um, what I like about these, I'm gonna set the camera down. These are just super, super flexible. There's no, there's no outsole to them. So it's just a midsole, very, very thin. And what I like to do is I like to keep them untied. Um, keeping them untied kind of gives me a little bit more awareness of just kind of how you might be barefoot, but with a little bit of extra protection for the harsh of, of the track surface. Um, and again, I found that keeping them on tie when I'm running nice and easy just gives me a little bit more awareness and almost like you're barefoot and the shoe itself is just part of the, the platform that you're landing on that provides just a little bit of uh, protection like I mentioned from the track. So um, just a little trick that I do just to kind of make me feel like I'm a little just a little bit more barefoot um, in warm up. So um, that's my warm up shoe and the track shoe is the Nike Zoom Victory and these are very short short distance track shoe maybe up to 5k type of distance that I like to use spikes so they got the spikes and I just I just love the fit of them um, super light obviously and just uh, kind of really give you that turnover you want on the track um, and it'll be uh, something I, I'll, I'll kind of ease into. I haven't worn them since I think the first time I got on the track this year was um, actually it was first part of March. It was early this year um, but that was I was I think I was on a track twice before pandemic hit and so this will be the third time and it's already almost June so I'm um, gonna kind of ease back into these the shoes. So again, the the Nike Zoom Victory. Um, I've got my my foot pod that will give me my watts, and I'll I'll monitor speed and watts just to kind of today. Like I said, I'm just gonna kind of ease into it doing 400s. I'm gonna do the 400s at my mile pace. So just nice and strong, not struggling, not pushing it i just want to see how i feel get a gauge for where i'm at because this is new new grounds coming in late may after not having been in the track all spring which i normally am so i just want to see how i'm feeling um, based on all the training i've done up to this point so it's kind of just an ease into it day but what i want to get into today is um the runner's knee knee pain whatever you want to call it there's a lot of terms for it but we're primarily going to talk about what is maybe con considered traditionally as runner's knee which is tends to be pain on the inside of the knee or on top of the kneecap or just below the kneecap okay anywhere anywhere in here or even on top um, is typically where runner's knee tends to kind of raise its ugly head versus being on the, the, the lateral side of the knee where it tends to be more of an IT issue. And we'll, we'll discuss IT at a later video. But what we're going to talk about today is the runner's knee and primarily, like I mentioned, feeling it on the inside of the knee or on top of the kneecap or just below the kneecap. And like I mentioned in my last video, you know, this is not replacement for going to see a doctor and we want to distinguish the difference between injuries and what I call dysfunction. And I consider runner's knee a dysfunction, something that is a cumulative or a, a chronic issue with you versus something that might be an acute, hey, you're at the track, you pull your hamstring or you're trail running and you tweak your knee, you twist your knee, you know exactly when you did it. That's, that's what I consider more of an injury, something that's very acute, very traumatic at the time that it occurred versus again, something that's chronic that just slowly gets worse and worse through time, okay? And com what's common with runner's knee is that it really, and this is why I mentioned in yesterday's video, is that most times with dysfunction, where you're feeling it, is not the problem 
okay and that's what i really want to get home is that we we don't necessarily want to treat the knee because that's just a symptom of what the issue is and in, in runner's knees case most times it's tight quads whether it's maybe you're doing more downhills now that it things of trails have opened up or you're just getting into more running you're doing more hills the quad can get tight maybe you are sitting a lot okay tight hip flexor all that can cause tight quads and what tends to happen with runner's knee is that the tight quads start to pull on the knee causing poor tracking okay and that's the pain we tend to start to feel it's the poor tracking of the kneecap that's causing the pain but what's causing the poor tracking is a tight quad okay so i'm going to set the camera down and we're going to talk about two strategic areas for you to look at to kind of diagnose maybe if this is something that can help you or hey you need to go really go see the doctor because it's 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 something more of an injury okay so let me set the camera down and we're going to talk all right so i'm going to pull up all right it's too tight okay so two areas that we want to hit okay like i said normally where we tend to feel it in the knee is on the medial side, underneath the knee, or somewhere around the knee itself, okay? And one common area that we need to look at is our sartorius. And our sartorius runs, attaches right at the inside of the knee and wraps around to the front of our hip flexors, okay? And it actually is a part of our hip flexors, okay? So again, it kind of runs down the leg and wraps around. So right in, about here, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. So here's here's my VMO, kind of right in between there, between the VMO and your quad. You want to kind of knead around with your fingers, ideally your thumbs, and start to feel a real, real trigger point or tender spot, a knotted, not a knot in the muscle. Okay, and if you feel around enough, again, generally it's kind of right in here, you're gonna maybe feel that knot, okay? Once you pinpoint that knot, you want to, like I, like I showed, really work it with your thumbs, okay? Work it back and forth, almost knead it like bread, okay? If you imagine that tight muscle, that knot is, is my hands, okay? And this is the other part of the muscle, Okay, we want to start breaking that up with the use of your fingers and your thumbs. Okay, we don't want to use a roller. Um, again, as I mentioned before in other videos, that tends to be too general. Okay, it's maybe a good warm up, but using your fingers or maybe even like a stick to kind of get in there, a massaging stick to really get in there and to find, right now we're trying to locate maybe on that sartorius where it's super tight, where the muscle might be bound up, okay? So really look for kind of a knot in that muscle, okay? And, and kneading it with your thing, fingers and thumbs is gonna start to break that up, okay? And that's what we want to do before we start to stretch it, okay? So we want, through time, this might take a week or so to really work on it, okay? So we're working on it. Knead it back and forth. Okay, really just almost keep your thumbs right on top of that knot. Then what else you wanna do is really apply constant pressure on that knot. Okay, and really try to relax. Breathe deep as you apply pressure. Okay, it doesn't have to be hard pressure, but just applying pressure on that knot. Breathe deep, maybe 10 to 15 breaths, really slow, try to relax. That's gonna help relax the muscle, okay? And relax it from pulling on the kneecap okay so nice just constant moderate pressure and then you could even as you're doing that get some movement here now I'm applying pressure on that knot as I'm lengthening the muscle itself by doing that flexion okay after you've worked that knot and found that tender spot, 
we want to then stretch. Here's the leg we're working on. Lay just a nice, moderate stretch to lengthen that muscle. We don't want to crank it, just lengthen it. Because now we're, we're trying to break up that tight muscle and then we want to lengthen the muscle to help bring back its natural state and allow it to get the range of motion it needs so it's not pulling on the knee, okay? So that's the sartorius area. Look around there and again, this is just a common area that I found. It, it might be up higher to you. You've got to kind of feel around and that's what's good about using your, your thumbs is you've got to kind of diagnose where, where that tight area it is. Um, and it could be just a general tightness in gen or general, <laughs> general tightness in general, um, that is just pulling on the knee. And that's where you can use the roller, okay? And getting all over and then stretching it, okay? Lastly, we want to focus more on closer to kind of the hip and the hip flexor, okay? So if we find some tightness up here, we want to work it out, okay? And then do a simple stretch here where I'm trying to squeeze my glute, maybe hands overhead so I'm standing tall. We don't want to lean into it this way. We just want to squeeze the glute and this will lengthen, okay? And then maybe massage, just massage the whole quad in general, all over, okay? You might even, if you have a percussion, instrument like the Theragun or the Hyper Ice, that would be, a, this is a great spot for you to be able to do and hitting all, all parts of your quad to really just loosen everything up. So then when you're done with the massaging, you go to your stretch. And again, it's just a light stretch, a light, moderate stretch, but we wanna hold it maybe up to three minutes at a time to really lengthen and really release things, okay? You might even massage around the kneecap. You know, if, if that kneecap's stuck, just, just kind of get, get some movement in that kneecap and the muscles around it, okay? Then stretch it. And then, if this is the problem, if tight quads are pulling on your knee, causing the trouble, and that's what we're talking about, this dysfunction, okay? Once you do the massaging and the stretching, you should feel immediate relief. And that's your clue as to this being primarily what's going on. And give you the confidence that, hey, you can really, really kind of work this out and get back to pain-free running with your knee, okay? so. Um, again, if, if it's more severe, it might take a few days, but you should begin to feel an immediate relief in doing this. And again, that's your clue that you're on the right path with this. If it continues to fester, um, again, you know, I'm always going to say, hey, go, go get it looked at. Make sure you're ruling out anything structural with the knee. That'll give you a lot of peace of mind that maybe this is all you need to do. Okay. So, all right. Um, hope that's helpful. And... You know, I, I just, I can't reiterate enough of the, just the massaging itself, getting in there with your fingers, have someone else do it, find all those tender spots, okay? That's telling you something. The tender spots, tight areas are a roadmap to what's going on in that dysfunction, okay? So again, it's not necessarily where you feel it as the problem, it's primarily coming from somewhere else and we gotta, we gotta fix that, okay? So, awesome, all right. I'm going to get into my drills, so come along and then, uh, then hit in the oval. Turf's too hot. I got to throw my shoes on. Whew, they're starting to burn already.
All right, into my 100s. Talked a lot about having rituals and mantras in previous videos. At the track is where I really get specific with my ritual. My ritual, whenever I'm starting an interval, is when I'm cooling down or in between rest intervals, I flip my sunglasses up, get my recovery, and then when I'm ready to toe the line again, I put my sunglasses back down. That's like kind of my signal to myself, my brain, that I'm ready to roll. I take three breaths and I blink my eyes three times and then I go. That's my ritual. It centers me, it focuses me, it's my time for, my, for me to tell my brain it's ready. We're ready to roll. So, as sports start to open up with pandemic and you're able to start maybe viewing sports, if you do, start to try and challenge yourself to detect all the little nuances, all the little me rituals that athletes have as they're playing, okay? This is to keep them centered, to keep them focused, to reignite the brain, to get in that flow state, to maybe hopefully get into the zone state. So as we're able to view more sports, start, start seeing all the little the tricks these athletes have, whether it's a baseball player running off the mound and not stepping on the foul ball line, they step over it. Whether it's a goaltender in hockey or in soccer, notice all their rituals that they have to keep them focused day in, day out, okay? We should all have them. So on these light poles, you can see we have offspray nests. Right here is an osprey. Commonly referred to as a water eagle. Not much wind, he's just gliding. All right, just finished up my 100s and going into my 400s. Like I mentioned, I'm just gonna keep these controlled. One common mistake people have at the track that mirrors mistakes in racing is going out too hard. Starting, maybe if, if I'm doing eight by 400s right now, I start out, those first two to three are too fast because I'm fresh. Hey, the ego's, the ego's firing, but then my last five to six is diminishing returns and I'm running them slower, harder. And that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid running slower, but the intensity being higher. So we want to keep them cons consistent and steady. Got a message from one of my athletes last night. She is a second place UTMB TDS, second place UTMB Oman and she was coming off a long, hard weekend and she messaged me and she goes, hey, I'm, I'm feeling pretty tired, a little sore. Should I go to the track tonight? And I said, yes, let's do it because she's doing strength repeats. So they're a little bit slower than speed workout. In previous weeks at the track, she's been running them too fast. So I told her this is now, she's a little tired. She can go do these and feel good about running them a little bit slower, but accumulating what we want to accumulate without diminishing returns. And she nailed it. She messaged me after. She goes, thanks for making me do that. I felt great. I performed really well. So a lot of times it's learning when to push through the fatigue and seeing that you can still perform even though you're tired. Being at the track, just like being at a race. And that's why I think it's so powerful for my athletes to use the track, regardless of the type of racing they're doing whether it's marathon half marathon or 200 miles is that when we're doing intervals it forces us to be in the moment it forces us to think just about the next one if you're thinking too far ahead you're going to get frustrated you're going to get overwhelmed a lot of times 
That's why I prescribe lots of intervals at the track for my athletes. Sometimes, you know, 15 by 400s. So they're having to deal with doing 15. Okay, there's a lot of mental, mental practice that goes on with that. And it's no different than being at the race and being impatient and going out too hard. Or, hey, you're at mile 20 and you want it to be over with, but you've got a lot more to go. Great mental training. Everything about being an athlete is trained in the mind. Done. Time for cool down. Just as important as the warm, the warm up and the main set. So be an athlete, stick to what you need to be doing. No better feeling than coming off the track.